guides are used for positioning and aligning objects so that they are balanced on the screen. There are two types of guides, the ruler and column guides. Let's look at ruler guides first. I want to add some text to my page and I'd like to use the ruler guides to make sure that they're aligned. You can access the rulers by going to View and enabling Show Rulers or you could use the keyboard shortcut Command and R on Mac or Control and R on Windows. Now we can see our horizontal and vertical rulers. The origin for both are at the top left of the artboard and they move in response to panning and zooming. I can click drag on the rulers to bring a ruler guide onto the workspace. If you look near the cursor, you'll notice a figure telling us the current measurement on the vertical ruler to help us precisely position the guide. When it's in position, release the mouse button to place it. You can drag out as many guides as you like. I'll position a couple more onto my layout. Objects will snap to the guides when snapping is enabled, but the guides will also snap to key areas like the center point of the document. I'll enable snapping using the semicolon keyboard shortcut, and now we can see it snapping to the center. You can remove unwanted guides by dragging them back to the rulers. Next, I'll introduce some vertical guides by dragging out from the vertical ruler. You can also reposition the guides at any time by click dragging them on the workspace or using the blue indicator on the rulers themselves to avoid accidentally moving objects on the document. You can edit guides in the guide manager. To access this dialog, go to view and select guides. It lists the positions of the horizontal and vertical guides that we've placed so far. I can add new horizontal or vertical guides using these buttons and edit them by double clicking and entering a specific value. We can select unwanted guides from the list and delete them here. From this dialog, I can also add margins to the page, but we'll come back to this later. One last thing to mention is that you can move the origin if you need to. If you click drag from the point where both rulers meet, you can drag out the origin. The rulers will move with it and the guide measurements will adjust accordingly. We can also see that the spread origin has been updated with the new position. And like the guides, we can enter specific coordinates. I'll change them to 0 and 0 to set it back to the original position. Now I'm happy with my ruler guides, I'm going to close the dialog and lock the guides in place. To do this, I'll go to View and select Lock Guides. Now I'll introduce some text by toggling the text layer visibilities back on and I can reposition them to the areas defined by the guides. Snapping will help me align the text perfectly. I can hide or show the guides using the keyboard shortcut Command and Semicolon on Mac or Control and Semicolon on Windows to view the result. Next I'm going to show you how to use column guides. First we need to look in the View menu and check that Show Column Guides is enabled. Then we're going to open the Guides dialog again. There currently doesn't appear to be any columns. This is because by default there is only one column and it spans the entire width of the page. If we increase the number of columns and add a small gutter, they will become visible. We can also split our columns into rows. So we're beginning to build up a grid for our layout. The gutter value determines the size of the gaps between the rows and the columns. We'll set this to 7. You can choose whether you'd like your columns filled as they are here or view them as outlines, similar to the ruler guides. I prefer them filled so I'll just change them back. You can also change the colour of the columns to something more visible if you'd prefer. You can set margins when you create a new document but you can also add margins later if you decide. I'll add a margin of 10 to three sides of this document. Now the layout is set up, I'll close the dialog and start adding images and text. I'll go to File and select Place. I'll find the images for my document, select them both and click Open. Because I'm placing multiple images, the Place Images panel has appeared to show which one will be placed first. I can select a different one if I'd like to place that one first instead. panel will disappear automatically 
once all the images have been placed. Now I'll add some text. To do this, I'll select the Artistic Text tool and drag out the approximate size. I'll add a title to this article and adjust it with the Move tool and the Column Guides. Next, I'll add some text frames. To access this, I'll hold the left mouse button on the Artistic Text tool to view the Frame Text tool and release the mouse button on it to select it. I'll quickly drag out some text frames using the column guides and then I'll go back and populate them with filler text by right-clicking on the text frames and selecting Insert Filler Text. I'll also toggle on the layer visibility for the section header layer to complete my document. Finally, I'll go back to the View menu and disable Show Column Guides to see how everything looks and make sure I'm happy with the final layout. So that was a look at the ruler and column guides. Thanks for watching.